Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Hello comrades, it's the Finnish Bolshevik. Today I'm gonna be discussing and debunking this liberal meme, and I hate this meme. I've seen this going around for years, and recently it made a bit of a comeback, maybe for the wrong reasons. Basically some liberal, I guess, shared this picture, why does Finland have the lowest child poverty in the world, and some uh, person who they called an SJW responded to it and said that it's because Finland is like a white supremacist colonialist state or something. And then people started mocking them like, oh, what the hell, Finland never had slavery, Finland never had colonies, blah 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 blah. I'm not really gonna get into that very deeply. Obviously, Finland never had colonies, Finland never had foreign slaves, except maybe during the Bronze Age or something. And I don't think that Finland's wealth comes exclusively from foreign imperialism, but you can't deny that Finnish corporations exploit cheap third world labor both inside this country and especially outside this country. Finnish corporations have a lot of investments in poor third world countries where they use sweatshops, where they dig minerals out of the ground and steal wealth from poor countries. So of course, Finland is an imperialist country, even if it's not as big of an imperialist as, let's say, the US or the UK or Germany. But anyway, that's not really what this is about. Let's just look at this meme, because this meme, it just drives me nuts. Liberals, especially American liberals, they romanticize the hell out of Finland and out of Sweden and Norway and all the Nordic countries. They romanticize our countries, romanticize social democracy and they think that oh social democracy is just this great utopia where there are no problems and if the US just elect Bernie Sanders and build social democracy then everything will be okay. Well no it won't. Things might be a little bit better, sure, they would be a little bit better but they wouldn't fundamentally be different. Social democracy is still capitalism. Social democracy still has all the same fundamental problems of capitalism. They are not fixed. There's no point in romanticizing social democracy or acting like social democracy or a welfare state or some kind of utopia. They're not. They're just capitalism. Capitalism with a smiley face on it. It's capitalism that tries to act a little bit nicer towards people so people don't get angry. It's just a strategy that capitalism uses to stay in control. They try to use a little bit of bribery and a little bit of trickery and a little bit of compromises to stay in power, to protect the wealthy capitalist elite. It's the same shit. I've already made a bunch of videos about social democracy and also Finnish social democracy. I will put a link in the description to a playlist where you can find those. If you're not too familiar with social democracy or Finnish social democracy, I think you will get something out of watching those videos. But now, finally, let's actually look at the facts or the fact claims in this meme. Because literally nothing, <laughs> literally nothing in this picture is true. It's all wrong. <laughs> Every single thing. Where do we even begin? Okay. First of all, I don't know where they found a stat which says that Finland has the lowest child poverty in the world. I don't know where they found that because I've never seen such a statistic. Obviously there's different ways of measuring it and whatnot. Um, the two different sources I found, they had Finland like in the top five but not number one. So that's wrong. Child poverty has tripled in Finland since the 90s. Tripled. When the Soviet Union was destroyed, meaning that Finland's relationship ended with the Soviet Union, Finland opened up to the Western world, to the Western markets, and was integrated into the Western bloc, to the European economic community, to the European Union, military cooperation with NATO, and all that. Well, that opening up to the West, that opening of the markets, that deregulation and more deregulated capitalism has of course led to an increase in child poverty. And the thing is, liberals don't want to admit that the only reason social democracy even exists is because the capitalists feel the need to compromise so that people don't turn to actual socialism. I'm sure it's a pure coincidence that when the socialist countries were destroyed, immediately social democracy also started being under attack. The reason that European social democracy is being destroyed 
is because European capitalists don't feel threatened by socialists anymore. So they don't need to make these compromises anymore. They don't need social democracy anymore. There's also economic reasons. It's harder for capitalists to get profits, so they have to cut social programs and spending and exploit people harder. Alright, so the first one, one year of paid parental leave. Now, depending on what they mean, this is almost true, kinda. First, I tried to look up the definition of paid leave, because although I'm not an expert on this, and I'm also not a parent, I'm pretty sure that people who are on parental leave don't get paid the same amount as their actual wages. I think the amount they get paid is less. So I don't know if that counts as paid leave, because in my mind, paid leave means you get your full pay. But I don't know if you actually have to get the full pay. From this picture, you kind of get the false impression that both parents just get like a year of vacation fully paid. And first of all, I don't think it's fully paid. And second of all, it's not one year for both of them. It's almost one year for both of them total. So actually, the father gets like 54 days. The mother gets, I think, 105 days. And once the child is born, it's possible for them to get another 150 days total, which they can spend with the, the child, you know, once it's actually born. So if you add all those together, it comes to roughly 300 days, so like 10 months. So it's not a full year fully paid for both of them, it's more like 10 months total not paid fully. But it's worded so vaguely that you don't really even know what they exactly meant, so this is almost correct. Alright, next one, free childcare. That's bullshit, absolute bullshit. It's not free, I don't know where the fuck they got the idea that it's free. I wish it were free. Now again, this is pretty complicated, and I'm not such an expert on this, but I do know that it's not free. For the poorest of the poor, it can be very cheap, or it can be even free in some cases. Certainly not for everybody. There was just a news article talking about this experimental new idea, like, hey, let's give 13,800 children in this experiment, let's experimentally give them uh, free childcare. In a bunch of different municipalities, they tried this thing of giving uh, these five-year-olds free childcare. So this is not the norm. This is an experimental thing that they're trying in, uh, in 20 different municipalities. It says, quote, With this experiment, we can find out how childcare being free impacts participation of the children and employment of the parents. And furthermore, there have been big debates in this country, especially last year, 2018, about what they call um, subjective right to childcare. Now that's a weird term, I don't know why Finland always uses these weird terms, but subjective right to childcare means basically that uh, you have a right to childcare, I don't know why the weird term. Basically, they were arguing that the poorest of the poor, the unemployed, shouldn't have a right to childcare because uh, I guess the logic is since they are not working, they are not entitled to have municipal um, public sector childcare. So there was a lot of debate about that. So not only is the childcare not free most of the time for most people, but you can even be entirely denied the right to even have access to childcare on whatever uh, justification. Oh, you're unemployed, therefore you're not entitled to childcare services. As if unemployed people can't possibly be busy out there trying to get a job or something. No, no, no. Alright, moving on. It just gets worse and worse with every one of these. Basic income for minors. This is a good one. Uh, and then <laughs> there's a picture of some girl with a bunch of money in her hands like, yeah, free money. This is what social democracy is, guys. Free money just raining down from the government. Every kid in Finland just has a bunch of government money that they can spend on candy and chocolate bars and ice cream. No! Basic income is the wrong term to use. Not even gonna get into basic income, but Finland has tried basic income for a small sample of people, like a couple thousand poor people, for six months or something. So that was a little experiment, which didn't really lead to anything, but that is entirely separate from this. 
So really what they are talking about is child benefits. I don't know why they call it basic income because that's just stupid and misleading. They're talking about child benefits. I guess basic income is the new trendy thing for the utopians. They think that basic income is the solution to everything. So they just call any kind of benefits and any kind of social programs. Oh, it's kind of like basic income. Well, whatever. So these are child benefits and those exist in most Western countries. Not sure about the US, but at least they exist all over Europe. Basically, it just means that in the case of this country, if you have a child, the government will pay you close to a hundred bucks of benefits per month so that you can try to use that to meet some of the expenses from the child. You know, food, clothing, maybe a bicycle or something, school books. And surprise, surprise, a hundred bucks is not going to cut it. It's not enough. Not even close to being enough. So anyway, of course, it's nice to get a benefit of a hundred bucks per month. It's a little something you can use to, you know, buy food and clothing for your child. But I think this picture is trying to appeal to like American kids and tell them like, yeah, if we had this, then you would get a bunch of money. You could just spend on whatever you want. No, it's going to go to the parents. It's a hundred bucks that goes to the parents, which they will use to buy clothes or something, buy school books, even though it probably won't be enough for that, but you know, they'll buy something important, some necessities, or they might save it for like a college fund or something. They're not gonna give it to you. You can't buy Nintendo games with this money. That's not how it works. It's nice, but it's not some great utopia. It's basically just putting a band-aid on the exploitative capitalist system. Yeah, we exploit you most of the time, but you can get a hundred bucks back. And furthermore, are you curious how this child benefit thing, how this came to be in Finland? It was passed in 1948, right after Finland lost World War II to the Soviet Union. It was a proposal by the Finnish People's Democratic League, which was a communist socialist parliamentary front. They did it and they got it passed. So it was the communists who did it. The capitalists have just lost the war. They are scared of being overthrown and ousted completely. They actually did believe that the communists were gonna carry out either a revolution or a coup in the country in the late 40s, even though this was a false fear. So they're afraid that the communists are gonna overthrow them. The communists start demanding this law to help the poor. So the capitalists are forced to agree, they're forced to make a compromise. Well, what about after that time though? What about after the 90s? Well, since the 90s, since the socialist countries were destroyed, of course, the amount of child benefits has gone down because the capitalists are no longer threatened by anybody. The left is too weak to fight back against them. The socialist movement can't really challenge them anymore. So of course, the amount of child benefits has gone down. Uh, although, opportunistically, the capitalists don't want to directly lower the amount because that looks bad. Instead, what they do is they just let inflation happen. So the benefits become lower and lower in buying power, even if the number stays the same because of inflation. So every year, the benefits lose buying power. They get smaller and smaller. And people were demanding that you connect these child benefits to the inflation index. So if inflation happens, you have to raise them uh, to the same degree so that they stay at least at the same level, even if you don't want to make them better. But this was not done. In 2011, there was an attempt to do this. But in 2013 to 2015, this was cancelled. And in 2014, they actually cut child benefits by 7%. So even this little amount of money that they give, they want to take it away. Alright, moving on. The next one is my favorite. Guaranteed job for everyone under 25. Wow, I didn't realize we lived in like East Germany or something. Holy shit. Guaranteed job for everyone? What is this, the Soviet Union? I didn't realize the Reds actually won the Civil War. I didn't realize that we had already built socialism in Finland. No. Guaranteed job for everyone under 25. So, okay. Since everyone has a guaranteed job, I'm sure that 
the youth unemployment in Finland is zero, right? Oops. No, youth unemployment in Finland is above 10%. It's even higher than unemployment in the rest of the population. So what's that about? Well, there's no source for this as usual, but I actually know what the source is. The government in 2013, they implemented a program called Youth Guarantee. You see where I'm going with this. It has guarantee in it, right? And youth, youth guarantee. They implemented this thing called Youth Guarantee, which basically pretty much just states that anyone who is under 25, they will get a job, education or training, or some kind of thing that's supposed to help them get a job. They will get that within three months of uh, unemployment. So that doesn't sound quite as nice. You know, when they say everyone has a guaranteed job, you imagine something like the Soviet Union, where almost right away, when you go unemployed, you just get another job and it's just given to you. Or when you're in school, you already know the job you're gonna get when you graduate. But no, you might have to wait for three months, a quarter of a year. <laughs> and then they will give you one of these things. Now, of course, it says you will get a job or you will get education or training or you will get some kind of support service to help you get a job. And it basically just means the latter. You're not going to be given a job. You might be given some kind of bullshit course, some kind of training course, or you're going to end up in one of those employment programs where you basically work in some company for free or do some kind of, again, some stupid course or something so that they can claim you're not actually unemployed even though you don't have a job. I have a video called 500,000 Finns work without wages. Yeah, 500,000. Half a million. Half a million Finnish people work without wages because they are in these internships and these weird courses and employment programs and whatever where they don't get a proper job but they get some kind of thing that's supposed to lead to them getting a job. Like, oh, okay, you work in this company for free for like three months and then maybe they'll hire you and then they don't. Or you're gonna be a, an intern in this company for six months without pay, only getting government benefits but no wages, and then they might hire you and of course they won't. So in reality, the government claims that, yeah, everybody's gonna be given a job, but it didn't happen, it didn't materialize. These American liberals just took what the Finnish government was saying, they just took it at face value and believed it even though it was all lies. We don't have a guaranteed job for everybody under 25. That's preposterous, of course not. That's never gonna happen in capitalism. Never. The youth unemployment, as I said, is even higher than unemployment generally. The youth are the most unemployed people in this country. The most unemployed. I have so many friends who are unemployed. I have several friends who are in those bullshit job programs where they work for free and it's supposed to lead to them getting hired and then it doesn't. They just work for free until the time is up and then they get kicked out. That's the new strategy for Finnish capitalism. This is neoliberalism. It makes perfect sense to have this kind of system where people work in companies but the companies don't pay them anything. Instead the government just gives them benefits as if they were unemployed. That's basically government giving life support to private corporations. That's neoliberal capitalism, and it makes perfect sense for capitalists to do that. I just wish the liberals would see that and not romanticize this broken, exploitative system. So the guaranteed jobs thing, that's probably the biggest lie in this, it's, and it's also the sneakiest. Alright, lastly, youth parliament. Now this is technically true, although because there's no source and because it's worded so weirdly, I can't be absolutely sure what they mean. They either mean the... European Union's youth parliament, which they might. I mean, at least that's called a youth parliament, but I think they probably don't mean that because this is supposed to be about Finland. So I think what they mean is they mean the youth council, which is sometimes called the youth parliament. It's basically, you know, a bunch of youth who they don't really have any power. They can't really do anything, but they're technically, theoretically, supposed to have an organization to represent their interests to the government. They can basically make some decisions and then go to the government and ask the government to
to take their ideas into account and they won't. The youth council might ask, please give more money to schools or something and then the government is gonna take that piece of paper and wipe their ass with it. So technically that does exist but I fail to see how that leads to less poverty. Honestly, I had never even heard about a youth parliament until I saw this meme like a few years ago and then I looked it up because it's that insignificant. It's not like the politicians think to themselves, oh no, the youth parliament is gonna challenge us and like protect the poor students and unemployed youth from free market policies. No, like nobody cares about the youth council. Most people probably don't even know it exists. I don't know, liberals just sometimes they get to me. How did nobody fact check this? What the hell? It feels so weird. Imagine like me taking the US or something, taking somebody else's country and then like claiming a bunch of facts about it. Like the reason the US doesn't have any homeless people is because they grind them up and turn them into hamburgers. And then I just put that out there as if it's true. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. In the description you will find all my social media links as well as a link to my Patreon. I also want to give shoutouts to Premier Lyles, Kami Vaporwave and also my friend Kat. All their channels are linked in the description.